All right, greetings everyone. Um, this is this video is just a short summary of uh, module one, which is kinematics. Let's just try and see what is it that we have learned and what is it that we can apply, how to apply what we need to apply. So this is what I have. Number one, we need to understand the directions. Directions are very important because uh, velocities are vectors, uh, vector quantities, which means they are both in magnitude and direction. First thing that we need to take note of is that we've got north, south, west, and east as we as we know it. And we agreed that north is a positive, east is positive direction, south is a negative direction, and then west is a negative direction. So we need to understand these uh, directions, right? Not only these directions, um, we also need to know the directions that are in angular, in an angle. For example, here's the theta there. So how do we name this direction? It is lying on east and the angle is rising towards the north which means this angle, this angle here will be east, theta, whatever it is in degrees towards the, the north. Or you can say this is north of east. This is north of east. So it is a um, theta degrees north of east because it is at the top of east. Let's say this angle was, let's choose another color. This let, let's say this angle was um thick, dark, dark green. Let's say this angle was here. That angle was there. Let me put it as alpha now. So that angle of alpha is going to be east alpha towards south because it is on east moving towards the southern side. Okay. Or we can say it is a um, Whatever it decrees it is, south of east, because it is now at the bottom of east. We do the same thing with the angles which are on this side. We do the same thing with those angles. So this is our direction. We need to know how to plot those directions and we need to know how to read those directions. Start. It, I advise you to start with the reference of x-axis whenever you are, so, you, are, you are solving your angles. So if it is here, it's going to be west, theta, towards north. If it is here, the angle is going to be west, theta, towards south. So this is this is how we get our, our directions. Very important directions. Because we can get the angle, but we only know how to put it as a direction. Because 30 degrees is not a direction, it's an angle. It becomes a direction when it has got the, the correct coordinates. West, 30 degrees south is a direction. Now, all right. So let's go to relative velocity, which is our 1.1. We've got two uh, 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 um, parts. It's, we've got a parallel vectors and non-parallel vectors. Parallel vectors are the ones which are either going up, both of them, or going down, both of them, or one is going up and down, or left and right. But these two velocities are a uh, velocity of a and velocity of b are parallel velocity of a and velocity of b are parallel so how do we solve these vectors um let's say we're looking for a v b we've already done this a v b which is a relative to b a relative to b we're gonna say v a plus v b but it's in, it is important for us to understand that v b direction will have to change the direction of vp because it is uh, the question is saying relative to whatever you have here it is relative to it which means b if b was going north now b is going to go south if b was going south now b is going to go north remember our directions north south west east that the side the sign let's look at this one here b was going south which means now b is going to go north which means this will be v a plus a positive what v b okay then we then you add the two vectors positive because this would this direction would change from south to to north 
which means both of them will be positive. All right, so if it was going to go down, um, for example, let's look at this one on the left-hand side. Let's look at this one on the left-hand side. You can go back and pause the video to copy these notes. Let's go back, let's see this one of A and B on the other side. So you've got A going uh, positive, you've got B going to the negative, the direction. So let's say they wanted a um, B, V, A, a which means we, 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 um, what, what, what are we changing now is, is A, because we are saying relative to A, meaning we're gonna have VA plus VB. VA will be, now A is the one that is changing. It was positive, now it's changed its direction, it's gonna be negative. So we're gonna have negative VB, sorry, VA plus A negative VB, which means we're gonna have a negative uh, uh, velocity, velocity, right? So this is how we deal with what? Relative velocities, guys, which are parallel vectors. We just change the one it is relative to. So when they say relative to A, it's the A that is going to change direction from that A to that one, which is gonna be on the negative side. Don't forget the direction west is, or left is negative. So we go to the non-parallel now. A non-parallel means there's gonna be an angle between the, the two uh, vectors. Let's say that is VA and this is VB. Again, as you can see here, our angle is west towards south, which means our angle of B, which is VB. So VA is going north, VA is going north, VB as things stand. Okay, VB is going um, at a certain angle. Let me not focus on this diagram. Let's just say it's going at a uh, west 30 degrees east. Ah, it can't be east, it has to be north. Let's say this one was the one given. So, and then the question says, find A, relative to what to be meaning b must change the direction of b must change so what are you going to do there you're going to change it by saying it west is opposite of west is east 30 degrees towards what south so this will be your new direction that you are going to use and then from here we don't just add uva plus vb like we did on the parallel on the parallel vectors no in this one what you are going to do, guys, on this one, what you are basically going to do, you are going to use your components, horizontal component and vertical component. So let's look at this one that is given here. There's a, a data there. So, and this is your B. So if you first find a, a component a horizontal, you will see that VB will give us a, a, a component on the vertical, which is going to be VB, cos theta and the theta must always be on the x-axis our angle must always be on the x-axis so that you can use cos and then and then sign some of the vertical components will be va which is positive a uh, minus because vertically this vp is 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 on the southern side it's going down which is going to be minus the value of vp sign sign what sign theta. And then once you get the horizontal and vertical components, you therefore have to do what? You, de you, you therefore have to find the, the resultant, which is gonna be the square root of horizontal component squared minus vertical component squared. Okay. Then from there, you have to find the, the direction. I'm gonna show you how to find the direction quickly. Let me just use this space here because I don't want to use too much uh, space. Let me find this space here for the angle. All right, for the angle. So let's say, for example, our horizontal component was found to be 100 meters per second in the eastern direction. I'm just making an example. And then you went and found out that your, your vertical component 
was 10 meters per second in a uh, southern direction. I'm just making an example again. Let me make a, a, an example that is going to look at least like the one that is on that is here. This is most likely horizontally to go to west because there's only one component which is going on the west. This one is most likely to go to the north. This is just for, for argument's sake. Which means our resultant R a, is going to be an X amount in meters per second. Now, that because we're going to get it here. Now, the direction is going to be the theta that we need to calculate, which is going to be in between west and north. So you first start by putting in the, the west because it's our x-axis, and then we're going to find the theta and then towards north. Remember, we are writing it in this form. So what is going to be our theta? Our theta is going to be found by saying tan theta is equal to your, your vertical component over the horizontal component. You solve for theta. Then whatever theta you, you get, you're going to substitute it here. So it's going to be west, the theta that you found, towards north. So if this was east and this was south, then your angle was going to be in between east and south. East theta towards the south. That's where our angle was going to be. All right. Um, that is it with uh, the component. But what is mostly important on the non-parallel vectors, guys, that is very important, gamma non-parallel gamma parallel vectors, uh, non-parallel vectors, that you need to change the direction of the one it is relative to. Very, very important. Then we go to this one, which is called the resultant velocity. There are two methods that I would like you to use. There's a component method, the one that I just showed you now, this one here, where you're calculating a horizontal and vertical and resultant components. Same thing. And then, and then there's a cosine rule uh, and the sine rule method. The component, horizontal and vertical components, works best if you if you are looking for a resultant. So in other words, the result, the result, resultant is unknown. So when a question starts, they say calculate the resultant as well as the, uh, the direction. So in other words, there, what is given to you is the velocity maybe of the plane is, is known. Then the velocity of the wind is also known. They also gave you the direction here. The direction is known. And the direction is known. That both directions are known. But what we need to know, guys, on this one, uh, on this um, uh, combo, on, on this one, is that the velocity of the wind, when we draw, because I'm a component way too, when we draw our components, uh, when we draw our components, you must understand that uh, we've got uh, what you call this. We've got from and to. So here we draw in this manner. So when the wind, direction of the wind is from, you must always change it from and draw it to what's whatever that is going to, all right? Um, so let me just show you quickly what I mean by that. So what I mean by that is that, for example, if the wind is blowing from northeast, which means it is going to southwest. So here, here it is, southwest. This is the wind, that's how you draw it, all right? how you draw it southwest um if a wind is a northeasterly wind which this simply means that it's coming from northeast all right so you need to change it and take it and, and draw it towards what southwest so all all of those principles so this component method works best here but if the wind is in a northernly direction 
it is going north. In a southeastern direction, it's going there. So in a, it means it's going towards that direction. All right. So we use the component method to calculate this. We use the vertical component, horizontal component, and get all of the values that you are looking for. All right. I want to make this video very small. It's just a summary. Then the cosine rule or, or, or sine method, we use it on the still air condition. Now, what happens on the still air condition? When they tell the airplane can fly uh, 200 meters per second at still air condition, it means that, or if it's not interrupted, it means that there's no wind. So this is the velocity of the plane without including what? The wind. So this will be your, your V plane. And then these are still air conditions, which means here you will also be able to find yeah, the resultant. But now we'll be using the cosine rule. I will show you because most of the times when they give you still air condition, they don't give you the, they don't give you the teeth. So you'll have to first find the angle of the aeroplane. Here, the in the in the unknown resultant, the velocity of the plane is given, the direction of the plane is given. Here on the a cosine rule, the velocity of the plane is given, the theta is not given. That's what they are looking for. All right. So this is one where you, you are going to use the cosine method here. I'm going to show you how the cosine method works uh, and, and the sine method works. And then when you also have got the VR as an unknown, so as, an, as a known value, like a resultant velocity is given, you also need to use a cosine method because it's much easier than component method if you are if you are given these two conditions. Now, how do they work? Let's see. These are just like your small notes, guys, that you need to, to take note of. Um, so what do we do here? Uh, here we are going to draw. Here you can see we draw tail to tail, tail, tail. But on this one, we are going to draw a head to tail. And our and our uh, resultant here, guys, our resultant. We draw on the on the head of the resultant. That's where we are going to draw. And the wind is always drawn from. Here we draw it to towards here we draw it from and we and we join it on the what on the resultant on the resultant where the where the aeroplane is supposed to go that's where we are going to draw the wind but we draw it in a direction it's going it's coming from from the head of the uh, destination right uh, yes and then we are going to use the method of A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC uh, cos A. We're going to use this. Or sine A over A is equal to sine B over B, which is equal to sine C over C. This is for us to find angles yeah, once you draw that vector diagram. All right. Um, I'm almost done. Let's look at the projectiles. So a projectile, you've got total range. Remember, a projectile is that object that goes up like a, like a rugby ball. So this one is our H max. And this one is our L, the range. This one is our range and our max. This is the total. Total range is L, which will be calculated by U squared sine to theta over g whereby e, e, e total height will be h is equal to u squared sine squared theta over 2g this is the total maximum height and the total range we use these two equations for it. total from start to finish from start to finish but what happens when you are given this is our value of u which means that component going up will be u sine theta. This component going to the left will be u cos theta. All right. So when we have it like that, it's going to it's going to be 
let's calculate let's calculate the uh, when you are given now at a certain time let's calculate this when you are given at a certain time so you're gonna have the range which is distance is equal to velocity over time velocity times time velocity times time okay so if it's velocity times time s which is going to be our range in this case, which is S, uh, S horizontal, SH, will be V, which is in this case, remember it is, the range is a horizontal, which is gonna be U cos theta horizontal component times what? Time. But here on the height, we, we are going to say SV, V being the uh, vertical. We are going to say, The formula is S is equal to a uh, U T minus one over two G T squared. So our U in this case will be U sine because we are under U sine theta because we are we are under vertical, which is gonna use the vertical component. T minus one over two G T squared. This is how we are going to find our vertical what? Our vertical height at a given time. So these two, guys, these two formulas are going to find us the same thing. But this one is finding us the total. This one is finding us only the, 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 high, the not height, the range at a particular given time. So these are just it, guys. I didn't want to make the video to be long. I didn't want a video to be long. I just wanted something that will summarize the whole thing for you, maybe if you had missed a class or two, then you can be able to, to come back to this. And you have any questions, any queries, you can contact me. Uh, but I'm a very busy person. Please understand if I don't reply immediately. All right. I don't know if there are any questions. I'll hear from you. Thank you.